Hello everyone. So in this video, let's try to debrief about RPI system. So one thing I always keep telling is what we study in textbooks is cast partial denture, but whereas what we do in the clinics is treatment partial denture. So if you try to correlate what you do with what you study, it is going to be a nightmare trying to understand RPD in prosto. So let's just keep it simple and say that we are going to study RPI system with respect to cast partial dentures. So the first picture on top clearly depicts a Kennedy's class 1 situation. So whenever this situation arises, there are certain characteristic features or certain considerations that one has to keep in mind. But however, in the history, whenever a situation like this arised, what they used was a cast or a circumferential clasp. So as you can see, a circumferential clasp will go and engage the abutment from the occlusal surface and will go below the height of contour to engage the abutment. So this cl uh, clasp system was constantly followed, but the major drawback with this clasp system was that it induced a lot of lateral forces onto the abutment causing weakening of the abutment and drifting of the abutment. So there were a lot of troubles with using a cast circumferential clasp that is coming and engaging the abutment from the occlusal aspect. So what, un what we understood after a point of time doing such cases was that there needs to be a stress breaker effect. Why, why is there a stress breaker effect? Because we understood that there is a difference in resiliency of the tissues that is holding the denture base and the artificial teeth and the abutment that is going to go and, and where the clasp is going to go and engage. That means the amount of load that the tissue can take is slightly more compared to the amount of load that the abutment can take. It is going to act like a lever arm. So when one side of the force is applied, when an occlusal force is applied to the edentulous side, a equal and an opposite upward force will be up applied onto the abutment. So this caused periodontal damage to the abutment and weakening of the abutment whenever a circumferential clasp was used. So once we understood that this difference in resiliency had to be matched somehow, certain scientists came up with the concept of eye bar design. So the first person to do that was Kratochville and he came up with the eye bar design aka the RPI system. So what happens in an RPI system is that it is slightly different compared to the previous design that we saw. In an RPI system, whenever there is a bilateral edentulous situation, whereas that is a Kennedy's class 1 or a class 2, instead of giving a distal rest, he gave a mesial rest. Instead of engaging a, uh, the occlusal, occlusal surface, instead of giving a circumferential class, he gave a bar class that is going to come and engage the abutment from the attached gingiva or the soft tissue and the proximal plate remains the same but there are certain modifications with regard to the proximal plate as well. So primarily that we what we have to remember with an RPI system is that instead of the distal rest we give a mesial rest instead of a circumferential class we give a bar class that is going to come from the soft tissue and proximal plate is as it is. So this is the basic component of an RPI system that is going to consist of mesial rest, eye bar clasp design and a proximal plate. Look at the first picture. The proximal plate is completely engaging just below the marginal, uh, marginal ridge to the tooth tissue contact. So this is something that we have to keep in mind. The proximal plate is going to come from just below the marginal ridge and engage the entire portion of the abutment. The eye bar is going to go and engage somewhere below the height of contour and the mesial rest is going to be given on the mesial aspect of the mesial triangular fossa. So this is what the RPA system, uh, the key components are. Let us look in detail about each of the component. First, if you look at the rest, as we saw before, a mesial rest is given instead of a distal rest in a bilateral Kennedy's class 1 or a class 2 situation. So why, what is the advantage of giving a mesial rest is that a mesial rest is going to direct the occlusal forces towards the mesial aspect of the abutment, therefore preventing drifting of the abutment towards the edentulous side. So this is one problem that we encountered whenever we gave a distal rest. So in this eye bar design or an RPA system, we give a mesial rest directing the occlusal forces towards the mesial aspect. That is the first advantage and the second significant advantage was that rest always serve as rotational centers during application of occlusal load. What it means is that, so whenever we gave a distal rest, what happened was the arc of rotation, the entire rotation that the, uh, the, the RPA, uh, the, the denture base was allowed to do was much higher. So when a distal rest was given, the amount of rotation that the denture base could do was much higher. 
whereas as we give a mesial rest the radius increases and the arc of rotation comparatively decreases so it becomes more of a linear arc of rotation that is quite a uh, significant change so these are the two significant changes that we bring about in an rpi system with giving a mesial rest moving on with the i bar design so as we saw before the i bar engages the abutment coming from the soft tissue or the attached gingiva it is anyways going to go and engage below the height of contour but the primary advantage of using an i bar design is that whenever an occlusal force is applied this portion of the i bar will disengage the abutment so whenever there is a disengagement between the uh, i bar and the abutment the amount of force that is going to get transferred to the abutment is minimized so when this forces are minimized the lateral forces on the abutment gets minimized and the entire overall periodontal health of the abutment is significantly maintained and also since it's going to come from the soft tissue food accumulation is comparatively minimized so these are the components or the description of an i bar design and moving on with the proximal plate let's look at the topmost the left topmost picture now we are looking from the proximal aspect when we look at the proximal aspect gp refers to, refers to the guiding plane and p refers to the proximal plate so this proximal plate is going to be around 2 to 3 mm of the uh, the occluso gingival height of the abutment so this is what was proposed 2 to 3 mm of height of the proximal plate when we look from the occlusal aspect moving on to figure b when we look at from the occlusal aspect we see the mesial rest is given and the proximal plate will be engaging more of the lingual aspect of the abutment so this was was proposed the proximal plate should engage more of the lingual aspect of the abutment that was from figure b moving on to figure c what you see is that there is a small triangular wedge shaped portion which was a modification later so let's just ignore figure c for now and moving on to figure d what you see is that in cratochial design what he proposed was the proximal plate should engage up to the tooth tissue contact that means there should be complete adaptation of the proximal plate to the tooth and should engage up to the tooth tissue contact that is up to the gingiva or the marginal gingiva of the abutment so these were the significant points regarding the proximal plate proposed by cratochial but however there was a slight modification proposed to cratochial's design by kroll so what kroll proposed was cratochial design is too extensive preparation for the abutment there was a lot of preparation that was required and this compromised the tooth structure so what he what kroll proposed was let's minimize let's mm, let's have a minimalistic effect on the abutment so what he proposed was the rest should only engage the triangular fossa and does not need to engage the occlusal half one half of the abutment that was the first modification with the rest and as cratochial will propose the proximal plate should engage from the marginal ridge to the tooth tissue contact but however kroll proposed you can see clearly in the diagram that kroll proposed that the proximal plate should engage only the bottom 1 to 2 mm of the abutment that is more than enough and also with the i bar cratoch will design had more of an extensive i bar but whereas kroll design wanted the i bar to be engaged more on the mesial aspect of the abutment and should be pot shaped to to engage additional tooth contact so these were the three modification that kroll proposed to cratochville's original design of the rpi system so with this we conclude with the rpi system and i hope this video was helpful for everyone to understand rpi system and its components thank you